technology problems. It's like these cameras understand that you depend on them and they're like, no, I just, I'm not feeling it today. So mm, be worried, be afraid, nothing's taping. I don't understand why the other microphone is like barely picking anything up. Usually it's like way too loud. And so. it never moves. We, it hasn't moved at all. We literally live our, our lives around the camera and it's like, mm, no, not today. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Kitas. Kitas. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Kitas, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, when we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch, we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Extra small, life is good shirt on this morning. Good job. Brand new shirt, I have no idea what I weigh. I always lean to, I'm sure I'm up. Mm. Every, every, every day. You literally woke me up at five o'clock in the morning. I'm sure with, I'm up. I don't know what the scale says and I'm not getting on there, but I feel really bloated and I'm sure I'm up. Tell, tell me, you know what it is? I think that I am looking for my daily punch in the face. That's what I'm looking for. As weird as that is, I am used to the abusive relationship that I have with the scale that tells me I'm a terrible person. And all I did is wake up today, have a wonderful shower, um, put on a smaller top, and so everything, life is good, 360. So you know what? I need to, to fish it out from someplace. Aren't I still terrible? Because the scale, you know, isn't there to tell me I'm terrible today. Well, I got one for you too. Okay. So I've been so excited because... I'm fitting into like the medium shirts, right? And we bought right. that new shirt. Yeah. And I'm all my other shirts are really baggy. Mm -hmm. So you've got to go to the office. Yeah. I threw this shirt on, which I bought at Costco. I've worn one time and I look like a sausage in it. I feel like a sausage in it. It's a large. It didn't feel like a sausage the last time I wore it. Now what happened? I have a feeling that Laundry. this this was a really cheap shirt. It was we very got it from cheap. Costco for like seven bucks. It's like a hundred percent cotton and a hundred percent chances so, of shrinkage. So like yeah, now I'm like, should I stop eating? Am I terrible? Did I eat too much yesterday? I didn't even finish all my dinner. Like that meatloaf stuff. Something just I, I I only ate one. I didn't even eat my other one. So yeah. You know, things mess with you. You're be crazy. But we're going to trust the process because I know it's ketos. working. It is. I know it's working. I feel better. I have more energy. I don't have the food cravings I had before. My clothes are all feeling better, except for the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we need something to tell us in the morning. You're just a little bit awful. Don't don't be too happy that, that you're living and that you're doing the right thing. So... I'm not listening to it today. So Rachel's going to go to the office to set up for all the kiddos this weekend. Anthony and I are going to go cut. Then I'm going to come home and I'm going to figure out how to time smoking a pork belly like a brisket properly because I have a game at 430. So I'm trying to figure out, do I want it to end before the game? I never want it to end. Or do I want it to end after the game? I'm thinking, get it to end before the game and then let it rest for two hours while I'm gone. It, oh, is that Because it should rest for about two hours. Really, here's our problem. When we smoke meat. We can't wait to eat it. You're supposed to let like a brisket or even ribs rest for one to two hours after it comes off. We're lucky if that stuff gets a 10 minute rest. I know. Which is really horrible because the very first cut is gonna be great. But if you eat it 10 minutes later, everything's gonna be dried out. Right. And it's, it's something that we've gotta get better at. You've gotta figure those extra couple of hours into the cook time. It's like when you exercise, you need to stretch and you need to cool down. It's mm -hmm. not just go hard and then you're done with it, walk away. You need those things. So we need to rest. I will leave it alone 
I will do my part not to nag, like, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Because right. I know I can be like that. So I'm a little scared about this cook, though, because we've been using our Kamado Joe classic first smash burgers and things like that. But I'm about to put a $50 pork belly on there. Wow. And hey, it's better to start with a $50 pork belly than a $100 brisket. But I'm a little nervous that I'm going to screw this one up. Well, because I I've never done a smoke on that. I'm used to throw it in the pellet grill into my rec tack and it's like set it and forget it. I am very confident in you and mm -hmm. your ability. And also, I'm glad that we're doing this before Thanksgiving. You know, where it's not just a money thing, but, you know, the holiday is on the line. Right. And you don't want to mess it up then. So it's better, I think, to practice it. Because I have a feeling if this goes well, the requests for Thanksgiving will not be turkey. Yeah. It will be this. So uh, got a bunch of emails from people about they're worried about Facebook and Instagram. So um, we're not sure if it's going to close down again forever or what. Um, we're not sure if people want to stay or should I stay or should I go. Um, right now, we are keeping both Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. because people have found us. Yep. And, you know, whether something is being used for, for evil or not, we're going to use it for good. That's right. So as long as we can continue um, having a safe space for people to meet. I don't want to shut that down yep. yet, uh, but we do want to have alternatives to yeah. go to. So we do have a discord group. And yesterday we also opened up a MeWe account, which I'm probably saying it wrong, but like how of course, else we're always saying it. Right? How else can I say it? Right. It's, Mayway, I don't know. It's, it's, it has to be MeWe. I'm really like, it's me, we, right? Well, you thought meme was meme. I know. I totally showed my age <laughs> in that staff meeting. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm excited about it. It feels a lot like Facebook as far as ease of usability. So the link for that's going to be down below. And um, and then we'll just see what's next. So the whole thing, and, and we don't want to get political or anything that kind of stuff. But no. the whole thing with Facebook definitely opened up our eyes to. We need to have backups. Having backups because I've I've thought about it for over a year that you better have backups of your videos. What happens if the platform shuts down? What happens if they kick you off the platform? I mean, gosh, for all we know, one day like big pharma is going to come in and convince you know people that hey, eating healthy and eating stuff and getting us off our meds is, is, is a bad idea and demonetize <laughs> the whole channel and, and take your videos down. Yeah. So I've always felt like I should have a backup, but I've never bothered looking for it. So we are actively looking for another place to not to not upload YouTube. We're going to continue to upload YouTube, but we're going to have a backup of all the videos. Right now, all of our videos are literally backed up on hard drives. And I've got a lot of them. So Almost I think we're going to go over to that library um, that Dr. Barry talked about. We were investigating a bunch yesterday. And also don't forget, for people who do want messages, we're going to start focusing a lot of time into um, our Patreon. So if people ask us, like, well, how do I, if I have a question or if I want to talk to you, what can I do? If you email us, we're not ignoring you, but we get a lot of emails. I've got like 500 spam emails a day yeah. that just show up in my personal email and then the other ones. So sometimes things get buried and we miss it and we apologize for that. We're trying really hard. But if you really want to communicate with us, the best way is to join our Patreon or our channel members. We do see that every day. We try to answer them every single day. We're trying to get more active in our Patreon and our channel member. And we're going to try to be more active in Discord because we like the way Discord works. It could be more instantaneous, but you can also use it like a Facebook kind of thing. So the links for all of that stuff is down below. But those are going to be the quickest ways if you want to communicate with us and also if you want to help support the channel. Right. We're not saying that that's the only way we're going to talk to you, but that's going to be the quickest Now, way. we do also have Clubhouse, but the only issue with that is you have to kind of be present. I think mm -hmm. that there are some, like, recording things that they're starting, but as far as what we've been using so far, yeah. it's like, if you're there, great, but if you're not, you know, you miss it. But we're still kind of new to that because, again, we're... We're trying to cram all this into the time that we have because right. this is not our full-time job. Yeah. People think that it's our full-time job. It's not. It's a 
part-time, sort of part-time gig that pays less than part-time, right. but takes more than full-time. Does that make any sense? But it's just, it's the ministry of your heart. That's right. And you just want to do as much you don't, as you can. You don't get into YouTube to get rich. You no. get into YouTube because you love what you do and you want to help people and that's why passionate. we're doing this. Which is what we are. Speaking of, before you go, and I know you need to get going, but I, I want to remind everybody. I do want to remind everybody, somebody who is passionate about helping people and changing the world is Dr. Barry. Yes. And Dr. Barry is going to be on tonight's live stream. Right, if so, you're seeing this. If you are seeing this on Thursday, our live stream, which is tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Dr. Barry is going to be live on there. We're going to be talking to about our labs, the halfway point of our challenge. Should we continue this challenge through the end of the month? Because he is currently doing it with his right. Patreon. I'm like back and forth. I don't know where you, I haven't talked to you about it. I'm like, do I want to continue this through the entire month and just do it for the month? But we're going to Vegas and we're going camping, my, town camping. My thought and is. And I may want to try some kind of treat in Vegas, but I, I'm feeling really good. I really feel good. And as much as I would enjoy treats, because. Lord knows I do. Um, I want my keto show ice cream. I know. But I just am in, in really enjoying this feeling. And I think it just would be fun to to take it all the way to the end. That's that's kind of how my mind works anyway. Let us know down like in the comment section. Should we continue through the end of the month? All the way to October? Maybe, maybe we should... Start new on November 1st? Continue it through the end of the month, but take a day off in Vegas? Or should we go to when we said we were going to go to, which is Avery Leaf for Vegas, and maybe add something back in, like Zevia? <laughs> You've already know. got this going on in your mind. I don't know. Let us know. But yeah, so Dr. Barry is going to be on the live stream. Talk about somebody who loves to help people, who is on a mission. I'm yes. excited about this. We're going to try to get him to answer some questions from you guys. Our Patreons have been sending us some questions yeah. they'd like us to answer. Our channel members have sent us some messages that, hey, can you ask him this? And we're not going to promise that we're going to get them all answered, but we are going to try, try to get some questions answered for you guys. Fun. So you're going to head out. Yes, because it is now 6.10 in the morning. I'm going to go start working on the vlog that's got to come out today so that you can preview that one because today's a, today, the it's day we're filming cheaper. this, is a two vlog because we didn't get yesterday's up. Yeah, so well, we you, got that one, and then finished, the one from yesterday. But it was like eleven o'clock at night, and was like, I don't think anybody will be there to premiere it too. Yeah. So, and then I got to time out the cook. I'm excited about the smoked brisket. Me too. So before we left for work, I took the pork belly and I covered the entire thing in a rub. Now my rub for this is going to be 25% Redmond's kosher salt and 75% of the organic black pepper mix. I actually, this is an old container, so I put it in here and then I can just kind of sprinkle it across the entire thing because I do have another thing of the organic black pepper. There's a link for it down below. I absolutely love this. It makes a great rub because it's the perfect mixture of salt, black pepper, and garlic. So we cover the entire thing and now what I'm going to do is I have the Big Joe coming up to temperature right now. I lit it, getting everything up to temperature. I'm shooting for about 300 degrees. So I've got the pork belly out here on the counter. And the pork belly is now, you know, coming up to room temperature. And then we can go ahead and put it on there. I'm figuring the cook is going to take three and a half to four hours. We got Caleb's car fixed. We got the hood on, the bumper on. Uh, we got the fender on. Uh, the only problem is, is the hood came with a dent in it. 
So I contacted them and they basically gave us the option of they'll pay to have it repaired or they can send us a new one, but the new one's not gonna be ready until the end of October. So we're gonna see what happens. For now, we put it on and we'll go from there. Uh, but overall, it wasn't too bad, except for there were some of the plastic little pins missing. So once we figure out what's gonna happen with the hood, then uh, we can get it painted. Okay, let's go ahead and check these out. So we ended up having to cut the pork belly in half because it didn't fit in the Kamado Joe. So we're doing one half in here, but the same method. Ooh, yeah. Let's go ahead and check this. Oh yeah, it's like butter. Oh yeah. Could use a little bit more over here. Let's go ahead and check this one. I think this one's a little bit more behind. Yeah. We're gonna give this like another 20 minutes. Okay, so this one is done. We're gonna go ahead and check it one more time. This is, oh my gosh, look at that. Right here is a little bit tough, but still pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and pull this off and we're gonna wrap it to rest for about two hours. So let's go ahead and check this one. So this one looks different. Let's go ahead and check it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much like butter. I feel like I could use a few more minutes. I'm gonna let it go right up until I have to leave. Okay, let's go ahead and check this one. Oh yeah, that's looking much better. Let me go ahead and grab the meat probe. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that, butter. Okay, we're gonna pull this off and we're gonna wrap it, stick it in the oven with no temperature and let it rest until I get home from my game. So we'll go ahead and shut this down, turn that off. Close that up and we'll just take this in the oven. So I just got a phone call from my assigner and they canceled our game. 30 minutes before kickoff, they forgot to tell us. So I get to turn around and go home, but now I get to work on the vlog and we can eat probably about an hour or so. That's the $75 I've ever made in my life. What happened? Right. I got up to the corner by Coconut Creek High School and uh, I got a phone call from the assigner and he said they canceled their game and forgot to tell the officials. Uh, so- uh, We took a shower. We still get paid. For nothing. <laughs> they canceled my game. That's pretty good, man. So do you get, oh, because you didn't- They have a contract that says if they don't, don't notify us within 24 hours when they cancel. Nice. Does but that mean that we're closer to Port Belly? About an hour. We're gonna let it rest for an hour. What are you doing? I'm packaging up some water bottles. Um, I believe we are completely sold out of the 22 ounce ones. Oh, wow. So I, there's a few more orders I gotta go print up for you now. Mm -hmm. uh, are you ready to eat? Has, have you ever gotten like a no to that question? Okay, here we go. Been resting about an hour and a half. That, it's five o'clock, so I put it in to rest at 315 so this should be perfect that was the longest hour of my life i know but you're getting it an hour earlier because my game got canceled okay you want to come over here yes so i do we've got two of them we had to break it up because i couldn't fit the entire pork belly on the classic joe so we cut half of it and we put it on the rec tack and then half of it went on to the kamado joe with a double indirect method so this one here is the Kamado Joe one. Ooh, that's pretty. Wow. So that's the Kamado Joe. That looks good. And then this one here is the Rectech. You do see a difference. So the Rack Tech one is a little bit browner on top. The Kamado Joe one, I probably could have taken the heat up just a little bit. They were both at 300 degrees. Remember, I'm still learning the Kamado Joe and we're looking for the heat coming down from the dome. And with the double indirect method, we probably could have cranked it up just a little bit, but they're both at the same internal temperature. 
Okay, you ready? Yes. We'll go ahead and we're gonna make a mess. Oh no, I got the I got it in a tray here. So let's just go ahead and take a piece off of this. Is it tender? Oh my gosh, it's like butter. I'm trying to not like ruin my knife too much. I want to see your reaction first. <sighs> oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh. How, what are you thinking? Like, is it like a brisket consistency? It's a brisket consistency. It is super sweet. It's like candy. Here, hold on. I'm gonna feed this to you. Okay. It's hot still. Oh my gosh. Now, the cure is literally 25% Redmond kosher salt. That's what the rub was on top. And then 75% of the organic black pepper garlic red from Redmond. And that's it. That's it. That's all the seasoning that's on here. The crust too. Mm. Now how does the other ones compare? Okay, I gotta remember which way the cut was. The cut is this way. Does it feel similar as far as? Similar, yeah. Cutting through. Okay, come over on the other side and I'll show you this. Come over here. Oh, wow. Wow. This one is even more like butter. I mean, you can see like the knife. Look at the, what it's doing to that fat. Oh my gosh. I mean, you can barely, look at this. You can even barely pick it up. It's just, look at that. It's just falling apart. <sighs> Is this gonna be like trying to pick between your children? Like, are these both so similar? You wanna try? Yeah. Mm. Is that amazing? That is just amazing. I mean, and I don't normally like, like pork loin, for instance. Like I, because of, there's dryness to it. Mm -hmm. It's so moist. It's like the best pork ever. This is nuts. This is nuts. <laughs> now you're gonna look at this plate and be like, that's not a lot of food, but this is pork belly. You're, you're eating the equivalent right now of probably like 10 slices of bacon. That does not, that doesn't even make my eyebrows raise. I mean, oh my gosh. Mm. And it's just that the fat, I know I got some aluminum foil there. It's just so good. Oh. Like, why have we not been making this? We've made our own, you this know, This may bacon. be better than brisket. I can't believe we're saying it. Wow. I'm, I'm thinking it too. Wow. Mm. Again, not my idea. Uh, I found this from Smoking Dad Barbecue. Who I want to kiss right on the mouth right now. I will leave a link for the video that I washed up here. And again, now he did it in the Kamado Joe. He did it in the Big Joe. So he was able to do one big pork belly in the Big Joe. We don't have mm. the Big Joe. Um, but what he did was he did half the pork belly. And then after he was done with the cook, he when he went to wrap it. And we didn't wrap it all the way. We followed his method where, and it's a difference. Because usually, I'm, I'm going to try this with a brisket. 
when you wrap it, you lose the crust. The crust, and even on ribs, it's no longer that hard bark. Right. It gets soggy. So what he said was, you mm. do a boat where you wrap at the bottom and up the sides, but leave the top open because now that air is getting in gets there. to the top and gets that crispy bark, which definitely happened here. This is like a crispy bark. And mm. he took half of it and he made burnt ends with it. Now mm. we can't have barbecue sauce right now, so we couldn't do that. But, but that's smart. Oh my wow. gosh. Have this at your next barbecue like have friends over and make this again pork belly a lot cheaper than brisket right now mm. i mean this whole pork belly there's a lot of meat left there a lot of meat left and this whole pork belly was like 45 dollars, which is more than we used to pay but i mean think about this watch this look at this you're talking about all that fat Try like taking a piece of bacon that's like only half cooked, not like the crispy bacon right. where it just crunches. But watch this. Look like at that. Butter. It it literally you don't need a knife to cut this. It just cuts. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna I have hold a butter a piece knife. Up. I'm gonna hold the piece up. Watch this. Ready? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. I just want to eat it with my fingers. Mm. Carnivore diet. Ancestral way of eating. I didn't have forks. I was gonna say, I'm I'm not upset. And um, you eat the meat, mm -hmm. and then you get to the bark with the salt and the pepper and the garlic it's from just the Redmond. Enough. We have spent so much money on rubs, like buying, finding clean rubs, like rubs that don't have any maltodextrin we and have. any sugar. And it's I just started, you know, right before this challenge experimenting like hey redmond's got their seasoned salt redmond's got their the the lemon pepper redmond's and i know everything in there i know what's in it and if you go watch any good barbecue guy pretty much every barbecue guy when it comes to brisket ribs pork belly their rub is pretty much garlic pepper and salt they're keeping it very simple you already got that all mixed together from redmond and then i just added a little bit more of the kosher salt to it mm. But when you get to that bark and get that salt, pepper, garlic taste. Wow. I mean, mm. look at it. It's beautiful. But it's literally like eating candy. Okay. I got some napkins. I think I'm going to need another piece of this. Okay. I'm going to be honest. We need to talk about our day. Okay. Because we have had a stressful day. Really stressful. Really, really stressful day. And I have to say, had it not been for the fact that we are on this challenge, I can see us burying ourselves in some ice cream, burying ourselves into, let's just eat all day long. Let's eat 16 ounces of cheese. Well, here, here's perspective. I came home and I am never not able to wait until we're eating. Like I'm never, you know, not okay to just wait mm -hmm. till we eat dinner. I came in the house, immediately went to the refrigerator and ate a boiled egg. Like mm -hmm. immediately, like I'm going, like my stomach is trying to eat my backbone. Right. I was that like super duper hungry. It was stress. Right. It's just that on this challenge, the only thing that I could reach for in there is the egg. Right. If I had carte blanche to be able to reach for anything, then yeah, I probably would have reached for a treat. Um, I, I would have reached, I, I don't even know. Like it was that jarring of a day mm -hmm. and my food intake has nothing to do it can't fix the stress right it can't answer the stress it can't do anything to make things better scam likely i know right it's a scam likely call of cravings right that hit me and i totally gave into it but thankfully we're on this challenge and i, I you just, had a hard-boiled egg I had which hard -boiled was the egg. first thing that you ate all day other than a tablespoon of butter in your coffee this morning so if i'm going to like derail my plan aren't i so glad yeah. that we just happen to be on this challenge and we're eating the right thing so even when i wrongly reach for food when it is a solution that I'm reaching for. First of all, I'm never gonna find a solution to my problems inside the refrigerator. I don't know why 45 years 
hasn't taught me that right. yet. But at least what I reached for is nothing that is going to undermine me or make me feel bad tomorrow. Right. Because that's the, the issue too. What if I reach for an inflammatory ingredient? What mm -hmm. if I reach for something that's, you know, going to give me a headache later? Right. At least what I reached for, still not good. That's not a good behavior. Right. We can't solve the behavior overnight. Right. But at least this challenge helped me make a better choice. And pork belly doesn't hurt. No, this is this is definitely like we didn't plan to have a bad day and then console ourselves with pork belly, but no. I'm really glad that we're eating pork belly tonight. It feels good. And honestly, it wasn't even planned to have pork belly, period, except for the fact that we were driving home and saw the video. I saw the video and we were listening to it. And I'm like, that sounds really That sounds like something really I good. too would enjoy. And uh yeah, some of I I've, I've been seeing some of the comments from yesterday's video people sending in beef prices and they're sending in prices of like $24 a pound for ribeye and you know it, it's insane so we're gonna have to look for other things and one thing I, I am thinking and it's gonna be interesting when this challenge is over to slowly add a little bit of chicken in and see what it does because I am noticing I'm not having some inflammation that we were having a couple of months ago same here and a couple of months ago, we were eating a lot of chicken and not a lot of beef. Yeah. Because, again, we were trying to really lower the fat and be like, okay, we're going to eat higher protein. And the bottom line is chicken is much higher protein. Right. And, you know, we were starting to experiment a little bit with the protein sparing modified fast. And the bottom line is, for the most part, it's very difficult to do beef on a protein sparing modified yeah. fast day. On the other days, yes. But I really think that the chicken may be one of the things that was causing some of the inflammation. The only way we're going to know is to is eliminate it, which we've done. And then reintroduce it slowly, take it back and see what happens. So, you know, I think when we get off of this, the mm. first day back or the second day back, I may say, okay, today's going to be a chicken day. Mm -hmm. Let me see how I feel the next day. Does that mean I'm never going to eat chicken again? No, no, but I probably won't eat the amount of chicken that I was eating because we were eating like 24 ounces of chicken breasts each per day. Because there's a lot of other lean things too, mm -hmm. right? Like we we were just looking into a shrimp and more different kinds of fish mm -hmm. and, and things like seafood, that kind of thing. Well, oh, even little... beef. Um, we bought four I have rounds yesterday because they were only $5 a pound. I have round is very, very lean. Mm-hmm. And if you want that leaner beef, you can up the fat and up the flavor, which I'm going to do when we make ours, mm -hmm. by taking an injector and injecting butter into the middle of it. Hello. So take an eye around, lean cut of beef, much cheaper than ribeye. Right. Inject a bunch of butter. That's going to give you flavor. That's going to up your fat. But if you don't want all of that extra fat, you can eat that leaner cut of beef where you're gonna get a lot of your vitamins and your nutrition from. Okay. But this is just amazing. So again, kudos to Smoking Dad Barbecue. You rock, um, dude. Amazing, and again, because it didn't fit, as I was starting to say before, in the Classic Joe, half of this was done on the Rectech, so you don't need a Classic Joe. You no. don't need a Kamado Joe. You can do this on a smoker. And I actually cooked it. I always cook everything fat side down. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, 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 you gotta cook this fat side up. And what I think it's a difference. What a difference because that fat's just got this nice caramelization on there. And our next brisket, I'm going to try it fat side up, which is against what every right. pit master says. So but this is amazing. Cook it in the Kamado Dro. Cook it in the Rack Tech. Just cook it. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you do it. Just do it. You will be happy you did. Okay, we're going to finish eating. We have to do all of, you have to package up all the rest of the mugs that have to get shipped out. I have to finish editing the vlog, mm -hmm. and then we'll check them with you guys later on. So one of the baby chickens has something called rye neck. Evidently, it comes from like a vitamin deficiency. Here's the thing. We're keeping her separated from everybody because she's getting packed because all she does is like lay down if she's around the other chickens. But if she's not around the other chickens and we isolate her, during the day, she walks around fine, but you can see how like her neck is like kind of tilted over, but sometimes she can stick it back up. 
So we're trying to nurture her back to health with like some egg yolks and some vitamins. She seems to be doing a lot better. Yeah, there's definitely like a vitamin E deficiency. So we've added more of that to her diet. She's getting a lot more like electrolytes and stuff. She really wants to live. They also call it stargazing syndrome. It's just usually genetic. The other two babies do not have this, but they're right. a different breed than her. So what happens is you can see how her neck comes over, but sometimes she can go straight up. But what happened, I guess because her neck will sometimes bend down, she will stumble when she's walking. But if you put her out there, she can run around. So we got her separated. But if any of you guys know, is there anything we can do? We want to like, you know, make her feel better. She doesn't seem like she's suffering so long as she's not getting picked on by everybody else. And she really appreciates being held. Yeah, she's getting like really, really sweet. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> past my bedtime oh my gosh Ten forty-two. how did the day just get away from us it's been a long day it has we at least are caught back up on the vlogs sort of high five now i gotta work on today's <laughs> and i want to start getting into the ones from kentucky from the kentucky trip yes so we're gonna go back in time <laughs> we're gonna release them all on thursdays for throwback thursday I'm really excited to talk to Dr. Barry later on today. I'm super excited. So if you're seeing this on the day it comes out, which is Thursday, yeah, tonight at 8.30, today Dr. Barry day. will be on our live stream. We're going to be talking about beef, butter, bacon, and egg. I finally got our totals for our food last week. You want to know about it? I'm ready. Okay. What's the damage? So we're going to go day by day. Because I was afraid that Texas Day Brazil really punched our wallet in the face so we're gonna go day by day okay and this was now this does not include your coffee okay and this does not include daily butter consumption but with that being said we don't consume a tremendous amount of butter and we don't buy bougie butter we basically buy most of our butter at costco once in a while we will use Kerrygold if we can get it on sale but it makes and my eyebrows go up like carry gold. Doing it for something wah, like wah. where you really get to taste it. Yeah. You know, like so in baking, we would use carry gold. If we're just gonna eat flat out butter, we would use carry gold. When we're cooking with stuff, we just use regular old right. butter. Okay, so it doesn't include your coffee, it doesn't include butter, but we're gonna add in a little bit for that. So on Sunday, we had burgers, we had bacon, egg, shredded pork. That was when the boys came over, when everybody oh, yeah. came over for holiday. And this is just what we ate. And we ate bacon wrapped steak. It came out to be approximately $7 a piece for the day, which is, to me, not bad. I'm comfortable with that. Monday was a big day. We each had three eggs and some bottom round steak, but the steak, the bottom round steak was like ridiculously cheap. We paid like $6 for the entire package. And that was part of what made the bacon wrap steak yeah. on Sunday. This was just the end of it. So we had three eggs and bottom round steak. It was about $2 a piece. Now, um, the eggs, we're getting them from our backyard chickens. Right. But what I'm doing is I'm basically saying if you were going to go buy not the cheapest eggs, but not the most expensive eggs, like the $6 a dozen eggs. But let's say you're buying eggs. We're, I'm putting it in about $3 a dozen. So $0.25 cents per egg. Yeah, but we're getting it for free. So breakfast. But again, not everybody's yeah, getting eggs sure. for free. But again, you can go to stores and get eggs. I know they've gone up a little bit, but you could for the most part still get just regular old cheap eggs for a dollar to a dollar fifty a dozen. So breakfast cost us about two dollars. Then for lunch and slash dinner, mm -hmm. sorry, we're you're making me yawn. Uh, we had sirloin Contagious. steaks. So that that was a bit expensive. Those steaks were twelve dollars a piece. Woo. Okay, and then uh, we had ribs, which. We cooked for the boys, but we had a little bit of ribs, and I felt that to be about $3 a piece, which honestly, we didn't even eat $3, but I needed a number. So I'm guesstimating Monday cost is about $17. For both of us? Each. Oh, each of us to eat. Yes. Okay. Monday was a big day. Tuesday, lunch was two one-third pound burgers. That was a delicious day. That cost two bucks because we pay three dollars a pound for ground beef. We actually were using old ground beef that was even less than three dollars, but we're gonna base it on today's current prices. prices. We also had two eggs. That's fifty cents for dinner. 
same thing. We had two burgers, third pound each, and we had eggs. So the entire day cost us $5 a piece. That's a great day, and it was delicious. Wednesday, we had a five egg egg salad with bacon, Excellent. and then we had more bacon. Then we had a pork chop that we got at that Carol's um, place on the way Those home from Georgia. Those pork chops are delicious. And then we had the sausages from Sam's Club. Okay. Which those sausages cost about a dollar a piece when you break it apart. So Wednesday's meal cost us about $7.25 a piece. Okay. Thursday, we went to Texas Day Brazil. All right, here we go. So uh, Texas Day Brazil cost us $35 a piece. Then we each had a hard-boiled egg and a Sam's Club sausage, which was a dollar. I rounded it up to 40 bucks. Okay? So, $40 so we spent $40. Each. That was a big day we went out to eat. Yeah. Okay. Friday, two hard-boiled eggs. I have it 50 cents. Uh, a Sam's Club sausage. That was like kind of breakfast. That was a dollar. And then um, we had each ate a pound of ground beef, an egg, and some bacon. So that's about $4.50. So Friday cost us about $6 a piece. Saturday, we each had two half-pound burgers with bacon and eggs. And then we uh, so we figured it cost us about 6 bucks. Honestly, I think that's higher than it should be. Then we also, throughout the entire week, went through two batches of the Maria Emmerich bread. Okay, yes. Which is true. not super cheap to make. Yeah. We buy the biggest bag of egg white powder that you can find, and it still runs us about $4 a loaf, and that is using the cheapest eggs you can find. We go buy the, all the eggs for $0.89 cents a dozen, because we're throwing out the yolks, we're feeding them to the chickens. Yeah. And, you know, I know a lot of people use the liquid egg whites. It's cheaper to go buy a dozen eggs and throw out the egg yolks. It's just cheaper. We have a lot of animals that enjoy the yolks. Yep. So in total for the week, if you include the bread, $92.25 a piece to eat. I now, don't feel like that's Let's horrible. round it up with butter, coffee any other miscellaneous stuff that okay. we may have forgotten to throw in here uh let's say a hundred bucks a piece the only thing but is but remember that hundred dollars a piece includes a forty dollar dinner right and that's not usual like so, we don't have a forty dollar dinner this week and then one day we had steak which cost us twelve dollars but on average, when you take out those two, we were spending six to seven dollars, sometimes five dollars, but on average, six dollars a day to eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Now, are we eating a lot of ground beef? Yes. Yeah. But ground beef is delicious and you can do a lot versatile. with it. Versatile. Very, very versatile. It goes a long way. Everybody in the family likes it. Like we make up hamburgers not just for us, but for the kids as well. Like, same thing with meatloafs and stuff like that. I mean, they enjoy that, too. And I'm just thinking, like, $100 a week, we've done a lot of lose weight plans. Remember when we used to buy, like, Nutrisystem food and Jenny Craig? Spent a lot more than $100 a week on that stuff. Even when I tried to do, like, the cheap route and do healthy choice meals, and we would do, like, three of those a day for breakfast, right. lunch, and dinner. They were still, like, three for ten. Yeah. You were still, like... That was on sale. That was on sale, and it it was not enough food. We always had to supplement with other diet garbage. Well, I remember years ago, I did Jenny Craig. and I mean, and this is years ago. I did Jenny Craig pre-meeting you, and then I also did it, like, when I was in college... And Jenny Craig was like ten to fourteen dollars per meal, right? Like for the dinners, and then you also had the breakfast stuff and the coaching. But, but then, and I had a lifetime membership for Jenny. Like, How I much can did go, you pay for that? I don't remember. I could go back tomorrow and just start buying Jenny Craig food again if I wanted to. I don't have to pay for a membership. I have a lifetime membership with them. This is what attracted me to him, obviously. He's like, hey, baby, you want to get in my car? I got a Jenny Craig lifetime membership. If I remember right, it was like 4 5 $8 for breakfast. It was like this big. It was 8 to $10 for lunch, 8 to $10 for dinner. And you still had to buy outside food. You still right. had to go buy salads. I remember they would recommend, because they told you eat five times a day. Yeah. And then you were having like a yogurt and you were having fruit and you were adding vegetables. 
And then you were also, you bought a dessert that was another four or five dollars. So that cost me a lot of money. Yeah. A hundred dollars a week, you know, and again, we had a $40 out to dinner meal. Right. Which again is not normal for us. Right. Even, so even if you wanted to say, okay, I don't like ground beef and two other days you had a steak at current beef prices. And pork chops. And I mean, just a, I'm just saying you want to go out there because people said, well, okay, we're eating mostly beef and I don't want to eat just ground beef. If I took that $40 and spent $20 on Thursday on another steak and then $20 right. on Friday on another steak, that would be three days of the week where I'm eating steak at the current ridiculous beef prices. I ate a lot of steak at Texas State Brazil that day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at that point we ate $40 worth of beef. We actually got based it. Based on current prices. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, I have been researching buying a cow or a half a cow at least. And it's kind of shocking that these ridiculous beef prices are not hitting the local farmers. Huh. I am finding people all over the state of Florida. They're charging more than they used to, but not as much as you're paying. Like I'm finding on average to get grass raised, grass finished beef in the state of Florida, we can get it for anywhere between five fifty and nine dollars per pound wow now that's buying and florida is not as easy to find a cow like right. if we lived in nebraska we're gonna have to do a three-hour drive to pick up the meat right it's harder to find it like right. you have to go to the middle of the state but you know you've got to figure current beef prices i'm seeing people saying they're paying five six dollars pound for ground beef so we're still paying $3 a pound for ground beef, but that's like Sam's Club ground beef. It's time to and, buy the cow. And you're looking at steak at $13, $15, $18, $20 dollars a pound. So we can buy a half a cow for, on average, about six, anywhere between $1,300 and $1,800 for a half a cow. But that's about 200 to 300 pounds of beef. That's a lot of beef. That's a lot of beef. So, you know, I would say if you want to eat a lot of beef, look into going to a local farmer. Personally, I don't even want grass raised, grass finished. I want grain finished, grain, grass fed, grain finished, so long as it is organic, you know, non GMO grain that they're feeding at the end. Yeah. But in Florida, they can actually pull off grass fed, grass finished easier than many other areas in the country because we have grass year round. Yeah. Like Nebraska, beef capital of the world. Right. It's we were up there. They, we were talking to cattle ranchers and they're like, we can't do grass finished because we don't have grass. You know, so they do a lot of the some of them do, they have alfalfa and they bring it in, but a lot of them do a grain finished and I like grain finished better it tastes better. It's fattier. That's the bottom line. The marbling line. is nice. The marbling is bottom line. But we're going to get something because at this point, I don't see the steak prices going down. No. I and mean, I think it's time to protect the user. Plus, I want to be able to help the local rancher. Me too. And I mean, we have the freezer space. Mm -hmm. So let's fill her up. Fill her up. Let us know, have you ever purchased a half a cow, a quarter of a cow, a whole cow? How many more freezers do I need? I'd love <laughs> to get a whole cow, you know, or maybe even find some family members and split a whole cow. I mean, the thing is, is most of the places I've contacted, there's no difference between a half and a whole. You, all you're doing is doubling the price. So it's not like you get a bigger deal if I get the whole cow. But most of the places we're looking at you know, six to eight weeks from the time we give them the deposit till the time you get the money. You don't have They're to get, pick the, the cow. Money. Get you the beef. You don't have to pick it. You don't have to be like you. I want to. I actually contacted one. Can we drive up with the video camera? No. Do the whole ranch and go, no. hey, Bessie over there. No. I want that one. Let Rachel go pet her, get to know her, name her children, and then slaughter her. <laughs> you are so mean. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Let us know down in the comments section. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. 
Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. I'm heading to sleep. Good night. <laughs>